Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson, and today we're going to break down the rise of the great Master Crane. Now, Crane actually grew up with a mother who loved and cared for him, but she also was extremely overprotective and viewed him as weak and fragile. With a variety of really bad allergies, a small size, and tiny legs, she just didn't believe he could keep himself safe out in the world, which was why she made him wear a full suit of armor till he was six years old. He was also never allowed to run or play, and she even tied pillows to all of the sharp corners in the house, but eventually, Crane snuck away and ventured to a kung fu class, and that changed his life forever. Immediately after seeing the warriors fight, he knew kung fu was what he was meant to do with his life, but after his mother found him hurt on his first day, since the class was a little advanced for him, she made him promise her that he would never have anything to do with Kung Fu again, and he agreed. You see, even though Crane loved Kung Fu, the dangerous heart palpitations that flared up when his mother saw him training led Crane to give up pursuing his own desires to prioritize his mother's health, at least in front of her. He didn't want to kill his mother by openly pursuing his dream, so he decided to keep his own pursuits in the Kung Fu world a secret from her by convincing her that when he left home, he was going to open and in. Sure, Crane could have gone after his second favorite dream of becoming a wedding planner, but in actuality, Crane continued to remain close to the Kung Fu world, which he accomplished by becoming the janitor for the Li Da Kung Fu Academy. Much like Crane's mother, many of the masters and trainees had little faith in Crane's abilities with his little frame and weak ankles, but Mei Ling, the top student of the academy, saw the potential within him and encouraged Crane to participate in the new student tryouts so he could truly begin his kung fu journey. Convinced he had to at least try to pursue his dream, he trained vigorously after work every night before the tryouts. But of course, even though he was ready to face the trial, he was mocked and taunted because of his interest in joining the school until he accidentally stepped into the course. Immediately, he sprung into action, and with a wave of energy coursing through him, his confidence soared. In a fury, Crane elegantly made all of the necessary moves to retrieve the flag that would allow him to be welcomed into the academy. And when he succeeded, he was cheered on by the other warriors. But even though Crane was introduced to Kung Fu in the Li Da Kung Fu Academy, his time as a janitor actually was not over. In the Wang Fu village, Crane continued cleaning up after high-ranking masters, practitioners, and soldiers. Maybe he did it because he was sending money back to his mother, or maybe the other big fighters forced him to keep his job as the cleaner, but whatever kept him a janitor allowed him to be recruited by Tigris to come with her to the Jade Palace. Now, while Crane believed he was making the trip to clean the Jade Palace for Master Shifu, Tigris was actually accidentally recruiting him to a fight against a giant known as Boar. The Jade Palace! I'm needed there! <laughs> Once Tigris had recruited all the warriors she believed she had been tasked with finding to defend the Valley of Peace, it was revealed to Crane, Tigris, and the rest of the recruits that they were not the warriors Shifu had sent for. But that didn't stop them from going to Tigris's aid when she stood her ground against Boar. Even after they had been turned away by Shifu, they all went to the battle, held Boar off until Tigris could regroup herself, and inevitably worked together to take down the threat to the valley. Appreciative of and impressed by what they had accomplished, Master Shifu proposed to Crane and the rest of the new warriors that they should stay at the Jade Palace so that they could perfect their own styles of Kung Fu. In Crane, Shifu saw that his crushing claws and long razor-sharp wings would become his best weapons, shields, and allies. And with the ability to fly, Crane could provide both deadly attacks and much needed support for his new team from the ground and the air. As Crane began to refine these skills, he rose to become a member of the legendary Furious Five and established himself as a graceful, balanced, and precise master of Kung Fu. But eventually, Crane's own restless, unrelenting, and driven spirit not only brought him to the peak of the Kung Fu world, but years later, this drive also allowed him to show his mother how capable, resilient, resilient and powerful he had become. Fun people, make sure to subscribe for more magical discussions and let me know which character's backstory I should discuss next, either from Kung Fu Panda or Disney or DreamWorks or whatever else down in the comments or over on my Discord, which you can gain access to by joining our community over on Patreon. Finally, thanks for watching and I hope you have a magical day.